What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Coasters Unscripted Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew, from Coaster Thrills, joined by my co-host, Caleb, from Backyard Thrills. Caleb, how you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Andrew. We got another jam-packed episode for you guys this week, and we're super excited to bring it to you. Yes, as always, we got a jam-packed episode. Uh, of course, we got so much stuff for this episode. Uh, just like the other episodes, we got so much planned, and we are super pumped for y'all to see this, and it is going to be a blast of an episode. Uh, we got so much, of course, planned, and yeah, we even got some announcements. Uh, maybe we'll just wait for those announcements, but yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see. Uh, so, Caleb, how have you been? I mean, you've been, what parks have you been to recently? Uh, I actually really haven't been to another park since the last <laughs> podcast. Um, yeah, but uh, Andrew, you've you've actually been to a park since the last podcast. Uh, yes, I actually have. Um, I've I've only been to one, even though it's my spring. It's both of our spring breaks, by the way. So uh, we're filming this on a Wednesday night. So yeah, it's very early compared to like getting out on Sunday. But still, uh, yeah, I've been to one park. Uh, about yesterday, I was yesterday. I went to Bush Gardens, Tampa. Um, got to ride Iron Gwazi. I got to see Montu. Like Montu is, oh, it, it's it's running so good now. Even like even if I rode it in the morning, it's still running great. Uh, I love that color scheme. Uh, I love the new repaint. What do you think about that? I think it definitely looks good. Although I think it's kind of a copycat of Goliath at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Definitely uh, resembles that. Yeah, I mean, I think it looks good. Uh, it definitely is a mustard yellow, but I think it looks fresh. Uh, I, I mean, I, d- I did really like the old color scheme, but I think it definitely needed that repaint, and I'm glad they, you know, changed it up a little bit. I think it looks, uh, as I said, fresh, and it looks really nice. But as I said earlier, we were recording this on a Wednesday night, which especially, like, is weird for uh, to go up on Sunday, but record on a Wednesday night, but... Uh, we're recording it one day early. Normally, we'll record this like last week on a Thursday, but um, yeah, uh, that definitely is, is still a weekend between when we're recording, but uh, it's just a little bit of a delay till we get the episodes because unfortunately, we cannot always find like the perfect time to do it on the weekend. You know what I mean? Yeah, our weekends are normally jam packed with stuff. We're normally going to parks. We're normally, you know, catching up on homework from school, if you know what I mean. Um, some nights, uh, so it's hard to harder to record it on the weekends now. Yeah, especially with like all the parks and stuff, everything. Everything Caleb really just said, but uh, yeah, obviously we, it's really busy for us. So if, it's great that we can find a time like to get constant uploads to y'all on Thursday. Which uh, I mean, at least we're rebounding this the second episode back from like the two week, three week break we had, which wasn't really a break. It wasn't really an intentional break, but still, like here we are. We're finally getting on a roll. We're gonna keep rolling out these episodes every week. So. I'm excited. I'm really excited for what we have in the store for this episode. So, but, yeah, yes. I am too. We should get started. Yeah, I know. So, to start off, we have the news, which which is really odd. Like, there's not been that much news, like, since, like, the last podcast we recorded. Uh, there's only been, like, two, like, little minor things of news. Uh, obviously, overshadowing this is, like, all the recent news, like, the bigger news that we covered in the last episode, but... Uh, we've got two more like, lower scale news parts. Uh, the first bitter news: um, Corkscrew at Canopy Lake Park. Uh, yeah, we all knew this thing was getting demolished, but or getting removed, or it's just gonna stay in there. But it's actually gonna be demolished. Um, uh, they're gonna I think they're gonna start it pretty soon. But um, yeah, they're starting to remove it. They're gonna demolish it, which really unfortunate because I remember I went to Canopy Lake Park this summer and like. It was really nice to like see that and stuff, but it's a little unfortunate that they demolish it. I think they probably should have used like the corkscrew or something for the rest of the park. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Like, what do you think about that, Caleb? I think it's very sad to see any coaster close, but uh, it probably reached the end of its service life. So I mean, it served its purpose, and so I think uh, I think you know they made the right call on that. Uh, but hopefully they replace it with something good. Maybe an RMC Raptor, possibly. I mean, I doubt that that park will like replace it with anything. But you never know. I mean, you never know. I mean, it would be really nice if they could. Uh, 
really love an RMC Raptor there. I mean, like, really want to think about it. So many parks would be, like, really well off with an RMC Raptor because, like, Raptors are just such fantastic rides. Like, they're just insane. I know, Caleb, you'll be able to ride your first one this summer. Oh, yeah. I'm super excited for that, but we'll get to that later. I mean, yeah. Uh, we already got to that, but, yeah, it's the Texas trip. Oh, we did. Uh, I, for- you I forgot. Uh, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Texas trip, obviously, uh, just to, if, if y'all didn't know about it, we'll be going on a Texas trip um, to start off uh, in summer. But um, yeah, the, we, all the te- parks in Texas, you can imagine. And there's obviously Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster, which is that RMC Raptor that Caleb can hopefully ride. But back I to the news. I am excited. Yeah, yeah. I, I would be excited if I were in your shoes. That's for sure. But yes, uh, Canopy Lake Park like really would be well off with a raptor but i don't know about it i I don't think like that park would do anything uh i mean hopefully i'm wrong because i really like that atmosphere in that park it's a really nice park and they really need a new coaster but still i don't think they'll be getting anything but moving on to our second better news um as you all know uh back in what was it like 20 it was announced for 2020 but at six flags discovery kingdom sidewinder safari do you want to take this on caleb uh, yeah, so recent construction photos have showed that Sidewinder Safari has gone vertical. Oh, oh my gosh, it seems like it's been an eternity since this ride was announced. I mean, uh, everybody thought it was just done. Uh, I thought it was scrapped. I mean, yeah, <laughs> like even like I went there like this past year in 2021 and there was nothing happening in that area. And it's really nice that they're actually like getting some construction done on it, especially with Six Flags being Six Flags. Hopefully it opens soon. Yeah, I hope it does. But I have another bit of news to announce that uh, I have recent insider sources that have told me that uh, flying school at Legoland, Florida, and yes, this is actually legit. They are considering this. But... Um, it has uh, been talked about for being on the chopping block for Legoland. Now, what does that mean? Well, right now they're looking at possible options to replace it, uh, such as a roller coaster. They also looked at expanding the water park and adding a mat slide there, although I think that idea has been shelved. But uh, from what I've heard, it is going to be replaced with another family coaster which is really exciting to see Legoland Florida get some investment as well, other than Peppa Pig theme park. Yeah. Honestly, like, I don't know. Honestly, like, knowing Legoland, they probably won't be, like, too original with that new family coaster. I mean, I don't know. Like, what could it be? Like, um, Well, one of the ideas is a Dragonflyer clone, which would do really good there. It would do wonders for that park if, to have it would. a clone of Dragonflyer there instead of that old janky flying school. <laughs> I mean, so many people just hate that ride that it's just, it's time for it to go. It's, it's done. It's, it's done its service life. It is so rough yeah. and bad. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's bad too. I, I don't like that thing, but I think it would be really cool if they got that, like a dragonfly clone. Like seriously, like that would make me want to go to this park <laughs> compared to what it is now. I don't want to go there at all. But like now with like a dragonfly clone, I would come here pretty often because dragonfly at Dollywood, I absolutely love that thing. It's such a great family coaster, really intense. Like it's just super intense for a family coaster, like especially that first turn. But yeah, I mean, I think it'd be really nice if they got that. But that's it for the news. Um, yeah, nothing. Obviously, nothing too much. Uh, uh, obviously, like since last week, there was way more news last week since it was we were covering a what was it two week gap. But especially, with, I, I've even seen more stuff about Kumba. Like, hopefully, that thing doesn't go. I mean, it would just be so sad to see that thing go. Yeah, I would too. But. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe it could be a Giga. Or Imagine if they got a Giga. Like, Bush Gardens Tamp with a Giga, they would have one of the best coaster lineups out there. Do you think it would beat Cedar Point? If Cedar Point tears down Dragster, I think it would. I think Bush Gardens would be, this, mm. would be better than Cedar Point. Well, I feel like if Cedar Point tears down Dragster, they'll put in something like Formula... Not Formula Rosa, but something like Red Force. I feel like they would do that if they tear down Dragster. So I feel still, like I think Cedar would. Points. Yeah, I feel like they wouldn't. 
double do it. Red Force is so much like Dragster that it just would just not feel like a true replacement. If they did replace the hydraulic system with a LSM system to make it more reliable, then yeah, I could see that happening. However, I, I just don't think it's a long enough track to do that, to get it up to speed. Yeah, I mean, it's whatever, but like, I, I, I still think Cedar Point, even like with, if they had a Giga, I think Cedar Point's coastal lineup could still be better. I mean, come on. I mean, let's think about it. You got Steel Vengeance versus Iron Gwazi. Iron Gwazi. Steel Vengeance, of course, best coaster in the world. No, <laughs> Iron Gwazi, best coaster in the world. We we all know our credit counts, but, um, <laughs> but, yeah. but Maverick, Maverick versus. Cheetah Hunt. Uh, Maverick will win that battle any day of the week. Millennium Force versus the New Giga. New Giga, of course. New Giga will win. If it's by B&M, it'll win. Montu versus Raptor. Raptor. Montu. 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 Come on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, it's it's it will get really tough. But like, just imagine how well like a Giga coaster would do at that park. Like, you'd have the Giga. You would have Iron Gwazi, Montu, and like. No Kumba, but Mantu as well. Like that is just such a good lineup. We could probably add something to Jungala to, you know, spice up that lineup too even more. Like add like a, add like a little kitty go. Well, no, they already have enough. Not those. a kitty coaster. <laughs> uh, maybe add like a little family coaster that's nothing like Cobra's Curse. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I feel like Cobra's Curse is like everything though. Like it has so much to it. I feel like a mine train would definitely be what they need. Like a mine train style family coaster. Like Seven Ooh. Dwarfs mine train type. Ooh, what about like a Vacoma family boomerang? Ooh, that might also work. They don't have anything that goes no. backwards at BGT, do they? Oh no, Cobras uh, does go, go backwards. I'm sorry. But My bad. That's barely like any backwards section though. Like, I feel, yeah, I feel that's like, true. And, and plus like a Vacoma like boomerang, whatever, not the original ones, but like family boomerang. I mean, I feel like that would be like, it's it's not that expensive. Like, it really isn't. I don't. I don't. At least I don't think it is. I feel like they would definitely be able to afford it. Yeah, especially considering their investment streak along with the last couple of years. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, if, if they spend on a giga, like they aren't gonna want to spend that much, like coming forward. But still, like, this is, like Bush Gardens need some flat rides. Don't you agree? Oh yeah, that that would also be another great addition to complement Falcon's Fury. And also, wait, we forgot to add this to the news, but Phoenix at Bush Gardens Tampa has been seen testing. Ooh, um, I forgot yeah, to uh, add that. Yeah, um, they, they, honestly, knowing Bush, they may just be testing it to like sell it. Which honestly, I hope that's what they do. Like, I do not like that ride. Yeah, that was my first thought whenever I saw it testing, but who knows? Maybe they might actually reopen it at some point. I mean, whatever they want to do. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of it, obviously. Caleb, I don't. You haven't ridden it, right? I have not ridden that one, but I have ridden the pirate ship ride at Carowinds, and I mean, it's an enjoyable flat ride. I mean, it's it's not the most comfortable experience ever, but I mean, it's a nice flat ride, and I mean, it'll still you know, add something that's desperately needed to Bush Gardens. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. It's just, to me, it's just uncomfortable. Like, those restraints on this thing are just really bad, in my opinion. Like, I don't really like those. I remember doing it a long time ago. I was just hated every single time because, like, it was just wasn't comfortable, and it's not really the most enjoyable experience. But who knows? Like, if they reopen it, it's just another flat for the park, just adds to their collection. And obviously, some people... We'll still like it, so we'll just have to wait and see what they do with it. But speaking of really good amusement parks and parks with like a great flat ride collections, we have our ride rankings. And for today's ranking, it's definitely not a ride. It's a park, and we are doing one of the biggest rankings we'll ever do on this podcast. This is our top 10 parks. Now, for me, uh, I think it's different with Caleb's list, but... Um, we will be doing uh, excluding our home parks. So, and any of at least my home parks, uh, I will not be including. Caleb, yeah, it looks like you are, but at least for I me, mean, I will not I be including my home parks. 
I haven't been to many outside of home parks parks so I pretty much had to include it in order to get a top 10 because there are a lot of parks in Florida and you know majority of my top 10 is Florida parks and I don't have a big enough you know uh, outside of Florida count of for parks to like consider them but maybe after this summer I will so maybe we'll have to update this next year Yes, definitely in the second or third season. We'll have to see. But moving on to my number 10 park, starting at number 10 for me, uh, we have Holiday World located in Santa Claus, Indiana. Um, one of the best parks I've ever been to just to hang out with friends. You could do so much stuff. You got all of the great coasters in the main park, Splash and Safari. I mean, I'm not going to include it in the park, but just alone, Holiday World with their fantastic Woodies and Thunderbird. The coaster, coaster collection of this place is absolutely insane. Like, they have Voyage, Legend, Thunderbird, Raven. Oh, I, I just want to go back there all the time. Like, Night Rides, of course. Night Rides make Hollywood Nights. And just Voyage and just all of these coasters are just fantastic. As well, really, is the atmosphere. Like, the atmosphere of this place is fantastic. You got all of the themed areas and, of course, the free drinks. You cannot forget about the free drinks. But, Caleb, what's your number 10? My number 10 is Six Flags over Georgia. Now, as you can see, there is still kind of a big quality jump from me to him because he's been to a lot more parks than I have. But I mean, Six Flags over Georgia, the first time I went, it was kind of crowded. And by kind of, I mean really crowded, especially being the first weekend of their Halloween haunt whenever I went in 2020. Um, but still, I mean... This park has a great coaster collection with Goliath, Twisted Cyclone, and uh, now they have Mindbender open, which they didn't on my last visit, but actually I will be going there again in the future, actually like Saturday, which is, uh, yeah. yeah, I'll be going there Saturday. Uh, Andrew will not be joining me. I will be going with family. So I won't be able to get to ride as much as I would with Andrew or get as much filming done as I would with Andrew. But I still, you know, I'll still have a fun time there. You know, I'll get to ride the Mindbender. I'll get to ride the uh, the Joker Kitty Coaster that I missed out on last time as well as Daldega Mine Train. I missed out on last time uh, because for time reasons I had to choose either to do those two or to uh, do another re-ride on Twisted Cyclone. And obviously, I chose Twisted Cycle and Reride at night. So, um, but yeah, that'll be a fun trip for me. But uh, what's your number nine, Andrew? Yes, my number nine. Speaking of Six Flags Parks, we have, yes, my second <laughs> favorite Six Flags Park. This is Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, located in San Antonio, Texas. I mean, what else is there to say about this park? There is... This is such a gem. There's so many great coasters. The atmosphere and the theming is the best out of any Six Flags park. You got the quarry wall, which just adds so much character to it. And really, this park is just so fun to visit. You have everything. like You never run, run out of things to do. You got a fantastic top two in Wonder Woman and Iron Rattler. And this park is really just a gem. And there's so much great things about it. And Caleb, you'll get to ride it this summer. So, or not ride it, but you'll get to go to this park this summer. But what's your number nine? My number nine is Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now, I know this might seem a little bit low for a Disney park, especially one with Pandora, the world of Avatar. But let me explain. This park doesn't really have much to do in terms of rides. It has Expedition Everest and Flight of Passage for a great one-two punch. After that, you have like Navi River Journey, Kilimanjaro Safari, Dinosaur, and that's about it. I mean, uh, I'm forgetting Kali River Rap Cali River Rapids, sorry. But um, I mean, other than that, I mean, there's not really much to do at this park other than like look at animals and like, you know, do those couple of rides. So there's not as much for me to do as you know i would like to have out of a park i could i just i if you get the lightning lane and don't wait two hours for flight of passage then you know it's kind of like a half day type park you know what i'm saying yes but that's all 
I guess that's all for number eight, nine. So moving on to number eight. My number eight is a park that we just may be visiting in a couple weeks. This is Carowinds, located on the border of North and South Carolina. I mean, ah, I love this park so much. There's so much other things about it. I feel like I'm always going over the coaster collection and everything about it. But really, like for a Cedar Fair park, this park has so much character. Of course, with the border going in between the in between the park and some coasters going over it. This park is just so fun. You got a great top two, of course, with all these parks, you got a great top two, but you got Fury 325, Copperhead Strike, Afterburn, Intimidator, uh, some other good ones. Uh, really, their lineup drops off after the top four, but still, uh, this park is great. Great atmosphere, tons of stuff to do, great kitty area, and really one of the best Cedar Fair parks and definitely um, starting to become the cedar point what did they say the cedar point of like the southeast or whatever but there's that caleb what's your number eight my number eight will be sea world orlando now i literally just changed this but uh sea world has a great collection and icebreaker just improved on that collection now i made i made this uh list whenever i uh just wrote icebreaker so i had some recency bias but um, yeah, uh, I changed it at the last second just a minute ago. But anyway, so SeaWorld has a great coaster collection with Mako, Manta, Icebreaker that just rounds out that lineup, Kraken, Journey to Atlantis, and Grover's Boxcar Derby. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, the reason why this is uh, kind of low maybe for some people is that... Um, Again, I just think that SeaWorld, you know, it, it left, leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, you could do a whole day at this park, but, I mean, you would have to re-ride a bunch of stuff. And, you know, it just, you know, there's just not as much to do as there used to be, especially with Antarctica still being gone. Uh, and Wild Arctic, too, biting the dust as well, maybe. Um, uh, but, yeah, I just think that there's just not enough to do at this park if they reopen antarctica i might reconsider but i mean you know this that's it for them but yeah. uh andrew what is your number seven my number seven is one of two hershen parks to make this list this is silver dollar city located in branson missouri uh this park is so charming it's everything oh, it's so charming I, I out of the three visits I've gone here, it is such a great time. You've got the great coasters such as Time Travel out or Run, but that's not it. You got uh, a great Rapids ride. Uh, you got some great other flats, and just the atmosphere, as I said, is really just fantastic with this park. It's Hershen really hit out of the park, and I'm it, for it being open in like so long, like they have done so much good things with it and it is such a great park to visit and i totally recommend it for anybody that visits missouri to go to this park but caleb what's yours so my number seven is dollywood so to keep on that trend uh dollywood definitely is a fun park to visit uh with the great coaster line of lightning rod tennessee tornado a uh, unique one with Blazing Fury, Wild Eagle, Fire Chaser Express. I could just go on and on and on about Dollywood's coaster collection. You will never get bored at this park, and that's what I love about Dollywood. And also, to complement the coaster lineup, you have some of the best food in the business, like cinnamon bread, which alone is a, worth it to this park. And also, you got like the Granny's Buffet over there by lightning rod i mean that is a great restaurant i ate there on my last trip there and oh my gosh that place is so amazing um but yeah uh this park is so well known for their food and coasters that it's just a perfect blend yeah i mean it really is perfect blend and that's what hershen does but speaking of hershen we got my number six hey guess what it's dollywood <laughs> what caleb just said but yeah, Dollywood. Uh, I mean, Caleb, you really just covered it. So much about Dollywood is fantastic. The coaster collection, obviously their food with that cinnamon bread, and you really just covered it. The atmosphere of this place is fantastic, and uh, you can spend I, – I go here like probably two or three times every year, and it is such a fantastic time. And 
with lightning rod now heating up just makes the coaster collection even better and just dollywood uh it's like a home park for me away from home and it is such a good place to visit and everything about it is just magical but caleb what's your number six so my number six is bush gardens tampa now Ooh. bush gardens especially just rounded out their lineup it is so good and uh I probably need to update that again, and I'll think about this after after I, we are done with this podcast. But uh, now with the addition of Iron Gwazi, I mean, that park is stacked now. I mean, you've got rides like Monsu, Cheetah Hunt, Kumba, Falcon's Fury, uh, and you got your kitty coasters with like Scorpion and Grover and cobra's curse i mean you could just go on and on on about this park's coaster collection but you know i mean that's pretty much all this park has to do though that's my only critique for it is it's only got coasters and i mean if you're a beer drinker you have that too but i mean uh we are definitely not beer drinkers <laughs> yeah. but um I but yeah there's still like stuff to do though there is, but it's mostly coaster related. I mean, there you got animals. I'm sorry, you f- I forgot about the animals. I mean, you got kangaroos. You can pet kangaroos. Where else can you do that? Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, where else could you do it? Definitely not Bush Gardens Williamsburg because that's all European animals. Like a zoo, you could go to Zoo Tampa. Yeah, you could, but I don't think you can feed uh kangaroos there i've been there a couple times i don't think you can i mean who knows uh welcome to the uh zoo unscripted podcast um (laughs) (laughs) but uh definitely not speaking of zoos we got six flags magic mountain taking my number five spot uh think i mean come on what what else is there to say it's it's the coaster capital not coaster capital but it has the most coasters in the world. It soon will have 20, just beating out Energylandia with uh, the Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster. Or not Golden Lasso, what, whatever they call it. <laughs> but what, what do they call it? Wonder Woman Lasso of Truth. Okay, Lasso of Truth. But I think just that's make what their it's lineup, called. Yeah, they'll just make their lineup even better. And their lineup already is stacked. Like, I, I'm not going to go through because it's just so many good coasters. But... Other than the coasters, there's not that much left. Uh, really, the park, the coasters really make up this park. But, you know, you do got some good flats. You got um, some good theming. I mean, it's Six Flags, so you don't expect that much. But for Six Flags, I mean, you got the underground. Uh, what was it? The other place where Twisted Colossus is. You got some, uh, you know, the decent Steam areas. District. Too. Yeah, but you got some decent areas. So, really, the coasters make up this park. And that's probably why it doesn't go to up even higher on this list but still i love this park to bits and just one of my favorite parks of all time but caleb what's your number five my number five which used to be my number one until you know i took a trip to other places um but my number five is disney's hollywood studios now this park has a fantastic one-two punch with rise of the resistance and rock and roller coaster or tower of terror depending on how you twist it or what's your preference but yeah uh rise of the resistance i mean that ride is just i'm speechless i can't even talk about it right now it's just so good (laughs) it's incredible uh, yes it is and then rock and roller coaster as well every single ride on it i mean i haven't gotten a bad ride on rock and roller coaster ever i mean that ride just a launch is so powerful and that's mainly the highlight of the ride, but some of the inversions are so forceful as well, and it has a great layout, as well as Tower of Terror. I mean, that's just ejector airtime machine right there, Uh, don't you think, Andrew? Yeah, it it is one of the best rides of all time, at least in my opinion, but I feel feel like this park would make my top 10, like if I included home parks, but it's I, I just love this park so much I know you do you do too Caleb it's uh, uh Disney is at their finest when you go to Hollywood Studios but moving on to our number four spots taking on my number four this is Knott's Berry Farm yeah you're, you're probably like gazing at the screen like what are you doing but like oh Knott's Berry Farm is perfect it's honestly perfect like 
there's so much, there's a blind, there's a perfect blend of everything you would want in an amusement park or theme park, whatever. You got a great coaster collection. You got some great flats, great dark rides, and the atmosphere and theming of this place is it's a gem. It's so so great. It's so unique, and this park is just so fantastic. I can go on and on just telling you how good Knott's Berry Farm is. As I said, and what was it like one of the last unpopular opinions of the other episodes? Uh, Knott's Berry Farm is better than every Six Flags park, at least in my opinion. And just there's, I have so much good things to say about this park. But Caleb, what's your number four? My number four, keeping with the Cedar Fair trend, my number four is Carowinds. Now, again, we just reiterated, I'm just going to reiterate what Andrew said. I mean, Fury 325, <laughs> that's all I can say about that. Oh, Copperhead Strike. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but um, other than the top four of Carowinds, there is a little bit to be desired in the rest of the park. However, that top four is just so elite that I have to put it this high. But um, yeah, Andrew already covered everything else. But uh, yeah, let's move on to our top three. Yes, starting out with the top three. Uh, for me, my number third spot is, yes, another Cedar Fair Park. This We just love our Cedar Fair Park. Parks. Yes, we, we definitely do, especially with our... You know, number ones and twos, but not my number three is um yeah my number three is Kings Island of course, but uh one of Cedar Fair's finest. They really go all out with this park, and it gets so much love, and it really does deserve it. They've gotten a great coaster collection over the years. Um, maybe not the best number one coaster out there, but the coaster collection is great. The atmosphere of this place is fantastic. It really just feels like a local park, and I know Caleb definitely thinks that because he got it pretty high, but um, do you agree, Caleb? Yes, I do. Kings Island is just so beautiful. Such a fantastic park. Yeah, just everything about it is just fantastic. But, Caleb, what's your number three? Sticking with the island theme, my number three is Islands of Adventure. Now, Islands of Adventure is just such a great park with that one-two punch again. It's all about that one-two punch of Hagrid's and Velocicoaster. Now, I just think that Universal Studios didn't make this list because of the fact that, you know, there's a lot to be desired with that side of the park. However, Islands of Adventure, you can definitely tell, is Universal's gem, and they definitely value that park so much, and they treat it so well. That park is just elite, and I think Islands of Adventure has potential to be number one over the coming years. Yeah, like, I can't imagine if, like, them even adding even more. Like, what else could they add? It's like, this park is already stacked. Like, could what add, else like, could a, they add? They could add a Intamin Strata Shuttle Hyper and a B&M yeah. Hyper. They could add an Intamin strata they could add i don't know what they could add andrew it's it's a it's a mystery what they have in store yeah i mean going we're going a little unscripted right now but something i just realized like i went on rcdb and i went to arizona you know how there's a new park in arizona no i did not yes but there yes there is uh but yeah, that I'm it's I'm so glad that they're doing this, but this new park in Arizona, um, they're adding a hyper chance hyper GTX, which Oh yeah, yeah now just, I know what you're talking about. The Hot Wheels ride. Yes, and I'm so glad it's a hyper GTX because like a lot we of these parks more. like we do need more. Like it's so nice that a park's finally adding this, other than Kentucky Kingdom. But you know, we're going unscripted. Moving on <laughs> to our number two. My number two is Hershey Park. Hershey Park, located in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Oh, this park is the sweetest place on earth. It is so sweet. Uh, and uh, this is the park that if I could like just choose anywhere to go, like other than uh, it's just I would want to go here every year if I could. There is just so much good about this park. Uh, the smells, the food, just the atmosphere, just being Hershey is just absolutely incredible. You got that great coaster collection. Uh, the colors, just the colors of this whole park is really just magical, um, especially with the new Jolly Rancher ride. 
uh, coming. This place is just magical. Everything about it is just fantastic. I cannot say enough good about Hershey Park. But Caleb, what's your number two? My number two trigger warning alert is Cedar Point. Now, again, my number two and one are very close, but I just feel like I had a much better experience at my number one park. But Cedar Point, I mean, you just can't get over that coaster collection. I mean, Top Thrill Dragster, in my opinion, is better than Steel Vengeance, but, I mean, that's also another trick or warning. But Top Thrill Dragster, Steel Vengeance, Maverick, I mean, just those names alone are so well-known in the coaster community. It's just... It was just so real to be at that park. But again, um, I just think I had a better overall experience at my number one park than Cedar Point. Just because I feel like, you know, the staff was a whole lot more friendlier at my number one. And really, Cedar Point, I just feel like I had a better experience at my number one park. Like the overall atmosphere of Cedar Point is nice. But I feel like my number one park just has that better atmosphere, that better environment, you know, that better vibe to it. But yeah, at Cedar Point, they just stapled on every single ride. And, it, you know, I've, if you were listening to my social media, I did a little bit of a rant about it. How for a coaster enthusiast park, they just really staple hard at Cedar Point. But compared to my number one park, they they were very chillax about that, about the stapling policy. You know, every single ride, I got so much room at my number one park. And I mean, I feel like, I feel like, you know, Cedar Point, the staff is great. And, you know, they're just trying to be safe. But I feel like, you know, if, if you know, if you have a little bit of room, it's not dangerous or anything. You know, it's, it's perfectly fine, you know, so... You know, that's why I feel like Cedar Point is my number two. But, Andrew, what is your number two? Well, my number two, I already said, was <laughs> King's Island. But my number one, uh, yes, my number one is, you guessed it, the one, the only, America's Rock and Roller Coast, Cedar Point. I mean, sorry, Caleb, I disagree with you on every single thing you just said. And Cedar, I just, it's my number one park. I have nothing else to say every visit there is so magical i feel like i just never get staple contrary to what you said caleb but uh i've been there so many times i've been there since 2015 17 18 19 20 21 hopefully 2022 i've been there so many times it is every single time it has never failed to disappoint or failed to whatever it it's, it's, to it's staple insane you? I never got stapled at Cedar Point, but maybe Cedar it was Point the staff is, whenever I went that was just staple happy. Yeah, for me, Cedar Point is just so magical. Staying at Hotel Breakers, it, everything about waking up, seeing top of the drag sitting in your window. Every time I go to time I go to Cedar Point, it's just fantastic. The coaster collection with Steel Vengeance, the number one coaster in the world, Maverick, one of the best, Millennium Force, one of the best for a while, and the atmosphere is fantastic. This is Cedar Fair's crown jewel, and everything about this park is just fantastic. But Caleb, what's your number one? My number one, contrary to what you think, Andrew, is Kings Island. And again, I just think this park is so beautiful. The ride-ups are just so friendly, and they understand coaster enthusiasts. They want us to have the best time over there. All of them just, you know, they're just they're just the people that you know that i want to be my write-ups everywhere um because i literally went on orion and i tried getting so much room and the write-up told me yeah uh, i know you're an enthusiast but uh it's not okay yet so can you just push it down just like two more clicks and then you'll be good and you know those are the kinds of write-ups you know that i appreciate you know the ones that you know will give you that room that you desire. I mean, other than, you know, I know some people, contrary to what they may think is like, you know, is unsafe or anything, but it's not really, I mean, even for me, I'm a pretty skinny guy. So, I mean, you know, getting room is kind of hard for me on some coasters, especially with staple happy ride ops. But, um, you know, it's just, I feel like such a better 
experience whenever you can enjoy the park and, you know, not have to, you know, worry about your thighs being crushed from the RMC lap bars that Steel Vengeance has. And you get stapled so hard that by the end of the ride, your thighs are just almost purple because of how staple happy the write-ups are. You know, that's why I enjoy Kings Island more than Cedar Point, but it's only that little bit more. If I go back to Cedar Point and give it another shot, maybe it might be better. Yeah, I feel like with ranking like coasters and parks, like it all comes down to what really your personal experience was. As you said, what Caleb just went over, uh, you could just have a bad experience on a ride or just being stapled. But let's say or you could just have one where you're just like, you're not stapled at all and you get so much room. That really just makes the ride for you. And it can really change on just how you think of an, uh, just what your opinion is on a ride. Like for me, Steel Ventures is my number one and it's the number one in the world. But for Caleb, it's not. So I feel like it all also, comes with purse. Also, yeah. shout out to uh, Logan from Thrills United who checked my restraint on the bat whenever I went to Kings Island this summer. So, yeah. Yeah. Just shout out to Logan. I mean, come on. He's the OG coaster kid. We all love Logan. But, um, yes, moving on to our next segment. This is the ride opinion. And uh, for today's coaster, for our ride opinion on today, we are starting with Mystic Timbers. Don't go in the shed, except we actually do. What's your opinion on Mystic Timbers, Caleb? My opinion on Mystic Timbers is a 10 out of 10. Great GCI. One of the crown jewels of GCI, in my opinion. But, you know, this is just rapid fire transitions. As I said in the last episode, I really enjoy rides with those rapid fire transitions, you know, back to back to back to back to back. They're so aggressive. You know, this ride is a little bit short, but that's just because the pacing of it just is amazing. Unheard of before I rode this or saw it in person. But um, I think it's a 10 out of 10. Uh, for me, it ranks number 11 among my among my list out of 114 different roller coasters I've done. So that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, ob- obviously, Mystic Timbers, it's just a fantastic GCI. Moving on to my opinion on it, um, for the overall score, just give it a 10 out of 10. It is probably the perfect wooden coaster. It's not my favorite, but everything about it is so fantastic. It's my number one GCI by far. Nothing beats it. And really, this coaster is just fantastic. There's so much good things to it. The airtime is fantastic. That layout going all the way out and back and just all the theming with it is just fantastic. And where I rank it, uh, my ranking out of... Uh, the 608 coasters I've ridden, it is my number 18. And for uh, a coaster being that high in my rankings, let me tell you, it is a good coaster. And Mystic Timbers never fails to disappoint. Just Mystic Timbers is everything you could, at least I could want in a coaster, especially with everything it just offers. Uh, the theming is fantastic. But Caleb, do you want to move on to the next segment? Yeah, so our next segment is Unpopular Opinion. And... Uh... Oh, mine's a good one this week. Uh, Like I said, I have some whack opinions, and this one's definitely one of them. That Rock and Roller Coaster's launch is the best launch in Florida, and it's even better than Velocicoaster's. Now, don't get me wrong, Velocicoaster's launches are both great. However, I just feel like, you know, Rock and Roller Coaster's power from 0 to 57 miles per hour in 2 seconds is just Oh my gosh, it's amazing. But Velocicoaster's launch also has a little bit of a rattle to it just because, you know, the wheels from Velocicoaster are not the right wheels. So that also plays a fact into it. They use the Escape from Gringotts wheels because, you know, they keep burning through those wheels. Um, But uh, yeah, I just think that, you know, Velocicoaster's rattle on that second launch is definitely noticeable. Um, and throughout the ride, too, it's it's just, it hinders the experience from a smooth launch like Rock and Roller Coaster has. And that launch is definitely one of the best on a Vacoma. I mean, yeah. Uh, Vacoma does some good, I mean, what? what? Uh, Vacoma has some good launches, I think. Uh, definitely has some coasters, but some good Vacoma launches. But 
for my unpopular opinion, uh, we have Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Uh, as they all know, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket is what is it? A uh, what is? I don't know what the manufacturer of it, but it's it a Mauer. At Mauer, that's what it was. I know it started with an M, but it's a Mauer uh, X car at, coaster. Yes, but located at Universal Orlando Resort at Universal Studios. I my uh, unpopular opinion on this thing is it's not really a good ride and the reason i say this is because i definitely know a lot of coast uh, people including you caleb that really love this ride uh i just i just don't understand the hype for me it's just really rough and just something about it is just isn't really that good i mean i know it's it has its moments it has some good airtime moments especially when you sit in the back but i feel like it's not um fantastic uh, it's just it's I just don't know. Like it's really something about it. It's just not the best. The restraints, in my opinion, aren't really that good. But um, it's just I don't know. It's it's not the best, in my opinion. Yeah, Rip Ride Rocket definitely is one of those love it or hate it rides because my stepdad also does not like the ride for its roughness. But personally, I love how much ejector airtime Rip Ride Rocket has going in and out of all those brake runs. You know, those provide some great, great moments of airtime that, you know, you really don't get from any other coaster. It's a very unique feeling from, you know, stopping so many times and then going off into an ejector moment from basically almost a stop, you know. And uh, some of the moments on Rip Ride Rocket that I like to highlight are its intensity after that second uh, after the second drop from the break run, from the first break run, um, or from the first drop after the break run, first break run, um, that uh, helix, the upward helix, is just a very forceful moment. Uh, almost every time I ride the rocket, I gray out on that moment, as well as the second double helix that is close to City Walk, and uh, also another moment I like to highlight on Rocket is that non-inverting loop provides some great ejector as well. But uh, also the wave turn on it too. I don't know if it's called a wave turn or not, but it, it definitely feels like one throws you out of your seat, uh, almost in like Iron Gwazi style, goes over the station. You know, so that's a kind of a very fun moment of the ride. And also the soundtrack and audio quality on Rip Ride Rock is amazing as well. I mean, what can you not like about this besides the roughness? I don't know. It's just, I feel like the only good thing it has is just having a little couple moments of airtime. Like, I don't know. It's just very odd to me. I just don't like really like it <laughs> you know what we kind of do we've kind of like moved this into a, a ride opinion itself we've done more of a ride opinion for this than mystic so you know we got some spotlight on some of uh universal's fantastic creations that's it's not it's not a fantastic creation but still it's universal uh gotta get them some spotlight but uh, like, what about howling horror nights i mean like uh there's been some rumors and stuff like I don't know. Like, they're, like they put out some spec speculation maps. Have you seen this, Caleb? Yeah, I have, and uh, I don't really recognize any of the IPs that are in Halloween Horror Nights this year. So, I mean, you might, Andrew, but I'm just not really that big into horror movies. But some of the uh, IPs I recognize from last year's uh, Halloween Horror Nights. So, I mean, this year I was shocked whenever I saw the map and didn't recognize any of them. Yeah, uh, I'm looking it up right now. Um, yeah, I'm just looking it up right now. Uh, it came like really true last year, so uh, we'll just have to see. But uh, looking at it right now, uh, for the Universal Monsters House, they've got Mummy versus Wolfman. Like, oh, that would be so nice. Like, they have that. They got some other ones like Fear Street. It's a very uh, well-known horror series. Evil Dead. The Weekend, which would be like, really cool if you could do a house or something. Or Halloween, like Halloween with Caleb, if you don't know, Michael Myers and stuff. No, I don't know. I haven't seen that movie yet either. Yeah, but there's that in Pandora's box. I think that was at Holiday, uh, not Holiday World, uh, Universal Studios Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, that yeah. I actually <laughs> did. That I actually did notice, and uh, that's an interesting concept. I saw a uh, like a POV of the house, and uh, it looks. It is definitely one of the highlights from last year's Halloween Horror Nights event and Hollywood. 
But uh, I just thought that was interesting that they brought back a house from Hollywood to Florida. And, uh, you know, maybe they might bring it back to Hollywood. Who knows? Just to have that, you know, integration of houses. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how true this is, but like knowing like what happened last year, like the same people did a speculation map of uh, last year's and they like it looks like they got all of them right, which so just. I'm, I, I think I'm just going to take this as the actual, like, map that they already have, like, for the houses. But, like, they've got some good ones. They also have, like, underground creatures. they got, some, like, a lot of original houses. Like, the only IPs they have is the Universal Monsters, Fear Street. Uh, is The Last of Us one? I don't know. Uh, Halloween, Evil Dead. But they got some really good... They got a really good lineup. And I, I would be really happy if they used some of these. Like, especially the Halloween one. Like... Like, if they did a house of, like, as you all know, like, there's, like, the three um, recent uh, brand new uh, Halloween movies. So, if they did a house in all three of those, like, that would be really cool. Yeah, I think but, it would be cool, too. Even though I haven't seen yeah. the movies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just really excited. Like, probably the one I would be, like, there's two I'll be most excited for. Like, Fear Street, which would be really cool. But, like, this one right here. The Universal Monsters House, Mummy versus Wolfman, like, oh, that looks incredible. It would be an interesting placement, too, if they place it right next to the mummy, or if they open the mummy right before this house opens. Imagine that. Well, the thing is, they're, like, themed to, like, different types of mummies, so I'm not sure if that would happen. But looking at it right now, like, the, this house would be located where... Um, Right in front of Rip Ride Rocket, so you know, like, uh, it, it was would be that located. where uh, Bride of Frankenstein was last year. Yes, it, that's where it would be located. So maybe the same soundstage. Who knows? But I mean, it would be it would have been really cool if they had, would have taken that one right next to Revenge of the Mummy. Yeah, like, oh, I just I think this really speaks like. Uh, I'm not, I mean, Caleb, you like Howling Horror Nights, but, like, I'm obsessed with Howling Horror Nights. Not as much he now, is. because it's, like, like, not as much now, but, like, I'm just obsessed with it. Like, especially when it comes around to August, which it's going to be nice when, like, to get back to August, like, starting this event. But, like, even, like, 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 oh, the week after it ended, I would be looking for speculation for this year. That's how much, like, I am obsessed with this. Halloween Horror Nights. I'm just, oh, I'm so excited for it. And, and he talks about like, it all year long. Even during Christmas time, he just talks about, you know, going over to the Halloween Horror Nights house spots, seeing if there's any construction or demolition going on of the houses. You know, every time he visits Universal, he has to visit the sites where the houses are. And he is just so obsessed with this. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I am like uh, I'm the definition of a Howling Horror Nights fanboy. But uh, yeah, we're going unscripted. This is like the most unscripted way I've ever gone. But uh, Caleb, do you want to move on to the next segment? Yeah. So our next segment of the episode is we have the ride brackets. So as you know, in yes. the last week's episode, we did the U.S. Intamin coasters, and now we have. We have gotten down to 16, and some have been voted by you, the viewers. And we will show you those results right now. Very, yeah, right now. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean, we went over the format last episode. We've narrowed it down from 32 to 16. So starting out with our first matchup, we have Top Thrill Dragster. This is such a hard matchup. Top Thrill Dragster versus La Vibora. <laughs> is this even Caleb, a which, question? I mean, all day long, yeah, Lavi Bora. Dragster. Lavi Bora, come No, I'm just joking. Uh, top Phil Dragster, obviously. We'll take that spot. But what's the next matchup? The next matchup is Cheetah Hunt versus Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Now, I think in my rankings, I actually prefer Cheetah Hunt just because Cheetah Hunt is more of a roller coaster, but Hagrid's is more of a story-driven experience. So it depends on what you prefer, but I prefer the airtime, the hang time of Cheetah Hunt, and just the overall great coaster that Cheetah Hunt is compared to the story-driven Hagrid's motorbike adventure. But Andrew, what is your opinion on this? Um, Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good matchup in my opinion, but 
for me, what takes the cake? I uh, I personally like Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure more than Cheetah Hunt. Um, I feel like just the whole experience is better. I love Cheetah Hunt. Uh, it was the first coaster ever to go upside down, but still, uh, I just feel like Hagrid's is such a good ride so much to it the overall experience is outstanding and everything about it even the layout is fantastic but moving on to our next but so what talking about that that was a tie so this is of course going to be one of the ones that you the viewer decides so uh once the, once this episode is out make sure to go on to uh the coast of the royals instagram uh go on to a story and just vote and We'll see who wins. But moving on to our next matchup, we have Millennium Force at Cedar Point versus Ride of Steel. Now, in my opinion, I have done both, but I think I'm just going to take Millennium Force. Uh, what about you, Caleb? I think I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. Millennium Force is definitely looks like the superior coaster, in my opinion, as well. Yeah, uh, Mania Force, one opened, is really uh, just, it, it was really good. For the coaster amusement or the amusement industry and it really made a mark on what these coasters could do and ever since it's been a great ride since but moving on to our next matchup we have storm runner at hershey park versus flash vertical velocity now even though i haven't done flash vertical velocity i mean come on i'm going storm runner i'm also gonna go storm runner because storm runner just looks like a more complete layout and also that launch looks so much more powerful. Yeah, I agree. Storm Runner is just such a good ride. There's so much to it. And it really just packs a punch through that layout it provides. But then we got another the next one. We got another lopsided one. This is El Toro versus Escape from Gringotts. Come on. Come on. You know El we got to go Escape from Gringotts. Yeah. No, no, like, no. I'm just kidding. I'm going El Toro. No, I'm going. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're, we're going back and forth, but El Toro was the winner. Uh, what's your uh, What's the next matchup, Caleb? The next matchup is Sandy's Blasting Bronco versus Wave Breaker. Now, Wave Breaker, I'm excited to ride this summer. However, Sandy's Blasting Bronco, I mean, you can't beat that backwards launch with the backwards portion of inversions. I mean, come on, you can't beat that. Yeah, uh, Boston Bronco is really fun. Uh, great multi launch coaster, but uh, second to last, we have Velocicoaster versus Avatar Airbender. Um, I think Avatar Airbender is definitely the not superior coaster, uh, complicatedly said, but yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely Velocicoaster takes the cake. But for our last matchup. We have Maverick versus Steel Venom. Another lopsided one. Maverick all day. I think that Steel Venom is not going to be my choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that will do it for the ride bracket this episode. Obviously, uh, we've only got a couple ties. Let's look at it. We've gotten... Yeah, we've only got... Wow, we got one tie. Uh, yeah, that is, of course, Cheetah Hunt and Haggard's. But, uh, and if I didn't that, disagree we, with you, then we wouldn't have a tie. And then the whole point of this would not be... Uh, <laughs> that would yeah. be kind of embarrassing to say, you choose and we choose for you. Yes. Yeah, but uh, obviously make sure to go on to the Coast of Thrills Instagram account. Uh, if you're in time, just go on my story, uh you get to choose what's better and you'll be one of the deciding factors of this ride bracket. So next uh, week, we'll obviously move this from 16 to eight and we are really starting to get into the actual good matchups. Like, and maybe it, we'll I'm actually really, have more ties. Maybe I'm actually really excited to see how this could turn out. Um, it, it's it's going to be a really good uh, matchup. I feel like really bad, like already eliminating intimidator three Oh five. I kind of do too, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's it, a lesson learned with this bracket. It's, it's competition was definitely superior. 
yeah <laughs> yeah uh, speak yeah velocity Oster, come on uh i mean i feel like that's a lesson to learn with this like bracket because like now like the next bracket we'll do i mean we have any thought of a bracket we'll do but like we, we gotta like make it more like professional you know like i feel if, like you know we what should I mean. stick with the randomness i don't know like i feel like in the first round some more come like the actual lopsided matchups, like more of like Lavi Bora versus Intimidator 305, because then it'll get more and more entertaining as the bracket goes through. But uh, yeah, that's I mean, that's still bracket. it engages you guys at the beginning of the of the brackets. So I mean, it encourages people to go watch the episode to see what happens. Yeah, that that definitely is true. But um, yeah, it, it's. I'm I'm just really excited. We are have so much planned for this podcast, and we are just we. It's, it's already the fifth episode. That's just crazy. Like it's we're going it's still going unscripted to this day, and it's the fifth episode. That's just it's already crazy that we've. I feel like we just started. You know, it is definitely mind blowingly rough. <laughs> uh, yeah, mind blower. Uh, mind blower unscripted. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, mind blower is okay. It's it's okay. It's mind blowing uh, okay. enough like this unscripted podcast is. Yes. Uh, what about let's talk about Gravity Group. Uh, I feel like Gravity Group's like overrated. This is my opinion. Yeah, Andrew. Um, I have. You're gonna no have words. to disagree. I am going to have to disagree. Maybe our next bracket should be manufacturers. Ooh, that would be a that'd good be one. a good one. Maybe we should have a <laughs> we maybe should. we should have a bracket to have a bracket of our ideas. Yeah, uh, of our well, mashups. <laughs> so like that would be you cool. guys just... you guys decide what we do for these brackets. Yeah, like number number 1 the bracket. Go go to vote on this. Uh top 10 manufacturers versus is um uh, top ten, uh, gravity group. Woody, I don't know. <laughs> I'm top going ten unscripted. Florida coasters versus top ten Texas coasters. That would be good. Wait, uh, that that would be good. I feel, I feel. I don't know. We've we've got so many ideas, and it's it's really gonna uh, be great. Uh, it's going to evolve Texas over trip, the though, years. Yes, it will. But speaking of the Texas trip. Uh, I think we annou- already announced this in the later uh, previous episode, but on this Texas trip, we are pretty much visiting like every single park in Texas. Like, oh, it would be fantastic. Like, should we announce park- all of our plans for the whole week, like day by day? Mm, if I mean, I think or we should. should. We, I, or should we keep it a surprise for next week's? You know what? I think we should. I, I think we should announce. All of the trip. Um, Caleb, do you want to start off with the first day? Uh, we'll have to see. I mean, it's a fantastic trip. We've got everything planned. It's. We'll see. I think, Caleb, you are going to be able to go, but it's... I am going to be able not... to go. It is officially confirmed. I am going. Yes. Yes. Um, we're not exactly sure if this will be the exact dates and everything about this will be 100% accurate, but... Uh, let's just do a quick, a very quick run, uh, run through. Uh, June 6th, uh, drive to Six Flags over Texas. Maybe stop at Yesterland Farm, which uh, if you don't know, Yesterland Farm is a very small park in Texas. They have like three credits uh, June 7th. All right. And then June 7th is to drive to Six Flags or to go to Six Flags over Texas all day long. Yeah, the uh, I I like to plan my hours so they're open from <laughs> eleven a.m. to seven p.m. No, I'm sorry, I won't do that. But uh, June eighth, um, drive to Tom Foolery's North Park in Austin. Go there. Uh, go to Austin's Park. Uh, go to Coda Land and drive to SeaWorld, uh, San Antonio. And so we got so many parks that day. What's July? Uh, yeah, June 9th. So June 9th is to go to SeaWorld San Antonio all day long and also to drive to Six Flags Fiesta Texas after that and then go to Six Flags Fiesta Texas as well for the evening hours. 
Yes, uh, I feel like that would be a really fun day. We get to get Caleb so many credits. You get to have so many credits. Same with on June 10th. Like, June 10th, we have a full day at Fiesta, Texas. And as you all know, a roller coaster rodeo is an event going on. So, obviously, we will be going there, and we're going to have a blast. All of our friends are going to be there, and it's going to be great. But it's the same with the June 11th, Back to Six Flags, Fiesta, Texas, for a roller coaster rodeo. Caleb will take on June 12th. June 12th is to go to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas and to drive to ZDTs and then go to ZDTs and then drive to, what is that called? Kema, Kema. Kema board, <laughs> I know it's hard Kema to Boardwalk. And then go to Kema Boardwalk. Yeah, you get, you get to then, ride Boardwalk Bullet. Oh yeah, so excited. That's one of my most anticipated wooden roller coaster credits. Um, also to go to Gavelstone Pier after that. Gavelstone? <laughs> Gavelstone. I'm sorry. My grammar today is not good. I cannot speak. Um, but then after that, we are going to... Is that it? Yeah, that is yeah, it. That is it. <laughs> and we then are going to they... drive home all day long. It's a yeah, long Yeah, so, and so entertaining. It really is, but um, even like with his trip, there may be some other people joining. I'm definitely not going to specify, but there may just be some other people joining other than Caleb. So as you all know, this trip is going to be an absolute blast, but it's, it really, we should just call it, instead of calling it the te- roller coaster rodeo trip, we should just call it the Texas tour. Or... Wait, we should call this the uh, the roller coaster of a Texas tour. The roller coaster roadhouse Texas rodeo tour. <laughs> we we have so much names to come up with. I mean, yeah, the I Texas mean, honestly, the Texas rollers tour. Yeah, the the rollers rodeo roller yes. coaster tour. Rollers, <laughs> yes. rodeo. Rollers are, yeah, it, it, it's so hype. But we are just uh, going uh, unscripted right now. <laughs> yes. Very oh, unscripted oh. right now. We're just rambling right now instead of going unscripted. Yeah, honestly. Uh, but I think with all that coming, uh, I think it's probably about time to end today's episode. Caleb, what do you think? You think it's about time? I think this episode's gone on for a little while too long. Not yeah, to say not tell. to say we hate you guys. We love talking, obviously, from the length of this podcast. But you know, uh, we have lives to right now to attend to. So, so with that being <laughs> we said, said that ex- we said that the exact same time. <laughs> so like the with literal that- exact same time. Okay, so with that being said, I feel like Tim Tracker, I should say, and we're off, and now it's time to pay the price. <laughs> we're, we're so going on scripted, bro. <laughs> but yes, uh, but yeah, so with that being said, um, we are off. Yeah, stay tuned <laughs> to Backyard Thrills and Coaster Thrills for all the exciting news. And uh, be sure to stay tuned to Backyard Thrills as well because I am going to over Georgia still. So, uh, yeah, that'll be an exciting trip. So uh, um, I may be over there by the time this episode posts. So, uh, you know, I might be able to uh, talk a little bit more about my experience at Over Georgia on the podcast next week. So I'm super excited about that. And... uh, yeah and uh you have any uh final words for us andrew to send us off um what should i say uh wheel <laughs> that is the final word <laughs> of the episode but hope you all of course hope you all enjoyed today's episode um make sure to follow all of our social media accounts and hope you all enjoy the podcast so we'll see you next time <laughs>